Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are all having a wonderful Monday. Today I'm pretty excited. I get to show you my first ever bioactive terrarium build. Now this video isn't necessarily a tutorial because this was my first ever time setting up a bioactive terrarium for a gecko. So this wasn't really meant to be a tutorial, but just rather a video of me showing you how I set it up. And this was my first time ever doing it. So I gotta say, it was very fun to do this for the first time. I had never done anything like this before, and I think it actually turned out pretty nice. You can see here in this clip, this is from about a week and a half after I initially set it up. So it looked pretty good in my opinion, and I just wanted to share with you my initial thoughts going through this build for the very first time. Um, some things I did wrong, some things I did right, things I would do differently if I did it again. So this isn't necessarily a tutorial, but I feel like there might be some good tips in here if you're considering setting up your own bioactive terrarium for your first time. And so this build was done on an 18 by 18 by 24 terrarium, and it was not dedicated for a crested gecko. I didn't design it for a crested gecko, and I'll kind of go through that throughout the video. But I think it is important before you even start your build to consider what animal you want to make it for, um, because that'll determine, you know, terrarium size um, and kind of what things you're going to put on the hardscape and what plants you'll use. So the first step was obviously getting all the materials to build this. I just happened to buy everything from Pangea um, just because they had a pretty good deal on everything and I could get it all from one place. I got the terrarium from my local pet store, um, which I'm pretty sure was very expensive. But um, nonetheless, it was a great experience. So I want to show you the things that I used to make this build for the most part. Um, you will see some things that I used that weren't in this box here that I got, but the first thing I used was frog moss. I had never used this stuff before, but I was very excited to try it out. I've seen it around in pet stores and such. And so this was always something I wanted to try, but I had never used before. So I just picked up a little bit of this. It's not very expensive. And I think it made a big difference in my terrarium later on. The next thing I picked up quite a bit of was a bunch of different cork rounds. I didn't get any flats for this build because my theme was kind of like a rotten tree kind of thing, which you'll see later on. Um, but I got a bunch of different sized rounds. I didn't know what I was going to use or, and I kind of figured it doesn't hurt to have extra rounds. So I just got a bunch of different sizes. Um, and I did get some cork bark that I had laying around and I bought some on Amazon too, just to have a variety of different pieces and si shapes and sizes and things. The next thing I got was some leaf litter, which is going to be part of our substrate layer. And for substrate, I'm using ABG, Atlanta Botanical Gardens. From all the YouTube videos I watched, this seemed like the most popular substrate if you weren't going to make your own custom mix, and it was, you know, recommended by most people. And so since this was my first build, I'm a little unsure, and I wanted to make things right. This is what I decided to use and go for, because it came pretty highly recommended. After that, I picked up this fake kind of rubber tree, which I didn't end up using, but was something I had also seen around that I wanted to try. I also decided to be lazy and get some pre-made drainage mesh for my terrarium. I also got some sphagnum moss and a mossy vine for our build. And then for our drainage layer in this terrarium, because there's a couple different substrate layers, I decided to pick up some Pangea aqua balls for drainage in our terrarium. So this was one thing I didn't get from Pangea, which was these sticks. These came from a tree we cut down about 10 years ago. They've been sitting around my yard. We were just about to burn them and I decided, hey, you know what, those look kind of cool. I could probably use them in my terrarium. They're a little bit longer, as you can see, and don't worry, I did bake them and I would recommend you do that as well if you're bringing anything in from outside. But I just wanted to get an overall placement and kind of feel of where they were gonna be in the terrarium once I actually got the background and substrate layers in there and things like that. So I kind of got a good idea of what they were gonna be. I just needed to cut down both ends to make them fit in here with a little wiggle room for when we add our substrates and our backgrounds and things. After cutting my sticks to size, I re-added the background that was provided by Exoterra from my 18 by 18 by 24. And quick little thing here, um, I was very skeptical about building a spray foam and silicone background like many other tutorials on YouTube um, recommend, just because I've used those products for other things and I know what a mess they are not only to use, but also to clean up. And if I were to ever do that with this terrarium, it would be very, very difficult to change it. And so I was very skeptical to do that. So I just wanted to do the default background, not saying there's anything wrong with doing that. It's just that I know it's a pain in the ass to try and clean up if you ever want to change things and you're kind of stuck. So it just seemed like something I didn't want to try for my first time around. 
But now since I had those sticks resting in here, there was some like debris on the bottom. So I was just wiping that up with a wet paper towel. I mean, it probably doesn't hurt anything, but you know, why, you know, rather be safe than sorry. So I just cleaned up some of the extra dirt and debris and things that had fallen off the sticks and other things that I had in here when placing things around just to make it nice and clean for the drainage layer. I also want to apologize briefly because you're going to see a lot of my back in this video. I will speed it up through parts that are, you know, not important, but uh, where this terrarium was in my room is kind of an awkward spot. So I really had no room to build it other than right here on the shelf, right in front of the camera. So I apologize about that, but I went ahead and I rinsed out my Pangea clay balls, which are going to be our drainage layer. Um, and I would definitely recommend washing these out. They are pretty clayey. A lot of clay does run off of them when you wash them out. So I ended up buying three bags of substrate and three bags of aqua balls. I believe I ended up using about two bags of each in the end. Um, don't quote me on that, but you do want a nice thick layer of, you know, aqua balls to have a nice drainage layer. I think what it ended up to be is about an inch and a half in the front. And then one thing I learned from aquascaping in the past is you always want a nice little gradient in there. So it was probably about two to two and a half inches in the back, which is plenty of drainage layer, probably more than you really need, honestly. But, you know, it doesn't hurt anything either. After I got my aqua balls in the position that I wanted them, the next step is to add your mesh of some kind to keep the substrate out of the drainage layer. You can use a variety of different things, or you can be lazy like I was and buy this pre-made stuff. And I tried to leave a little bit of an overhang on all sides in the front and the back to hopefully catch any substrate from falling into the drainage layer, which you really don't want to have happen. So you can see I probably have about a half an inch here on the front and a lot more in the back to hopefully catch any substrate from falling in and uh, just prevent things from dirtying up the water that's gonna potentially be in your drainage layer. After getting our mesh in place where I wanted it and our drainage layer is already under our mesh, the next step for me was adding my sticks. Now I understand this is going to be different for everybody um, depending on what kind of hardscaping you're doing, but I wanted the sticks to be sitting down in the substrate and I had cut them just right so that they would be close to the top of the terrarium if they were sitting on top of the drainage layer, which I figured to be about two inches tall or so. Um, depending on what you're doing, this can obviously be a lot different, but I needed to get my hardscape kind of in there. And I cut them to a size to where they're both leaning on both sides of the terrarium as well. So they're not loose in there and I don't have to worry about them falling and crushing any of the animals or anything of that nature, which is obviously a real concern when you have things high up in the terrarium. One thing I see about a lot of bioactive terrariums, which is something I, you know, kind of don't understand, but maybe I'm missing something here, is that a lot of them don't have anything, you know, in the main bulk of the terrarium. Like if they do the spray foam sides and the back, then there's not a whole lot in the airspace in the middle of the terrarium, if that makes sense. And to me, you know, I've always been an advocate when I'm setting up breeder tubs, breeder tubs, sorry, for crested geckos to have a lot of surface area in there, like stick structure for things to climb on. And even though this build isn't for crested geckos, that applies to all reptiles, basically any arboreal lizard. And so if you have a bunch of open air space, obviously little geckos can't fly. And so that's just a bunch of wasted space in there. So a lot of the videos I watched were, you know, a lot of open area in the front of the terrarium and up in the air space, which doesn't do your animals any well for having places to hide and climb and, you know, move around in. So that's something I really want to kind of fix, I guess you could say, in my build of this. I want the animals that are going to be going in here to have a lot of surface area and sticks to climb on and things um, because... It's better than just having open air space that they can't do anything with, in my opinion, at least. But maybe I'm missing something on that. That was just an observation I had made when watching a lot of the builds I've seen. Um, I understand it, you know, it, it looks, when you have the built-in background, it looks kind of better. When you have a little open air space, and I wanted to kind of keep that in here as well, just to have, you know, aeration and stuff like that. But, yeah, I, I really wanted to go for something where they had a lot of structure to climb on. Now I have both of my sticks in there securely. They're kind of holding the drainage mesh in place too as well, which I think is kind of an added benefit I didn't think of. They're both in there pretty securely though. And so we're gonna move on to our next step. 
The next step after obviously adding your drainage mesh is now you're adding your substrate. In our case, the ABG um, Atlanta Botanical Garden substrate. Now one mistake that I made here that I would fix going forward is make sure you wet your substrate a little bit, get a little bit moist. Um, you know, not soaking wet or anything that's going to create mold issues, but you know, a nice moist, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, a nice moist substrate. I left it pretty dry here. I was spraying it down a little bit, but in the end it wasn't enough. So that's something I would definitely change next time is I'd get it more moist, more wet um, before putting it into, into the terrarium um, when it's a little bit harder to get all wetted again in a nice even moisture. Once I finally had what I felt like was a good amount of substrate in to start, I kind of started playing around with different cork bark positions um, and kind of seeing where I wanted things. You know, this is the fun part of the terrarium build is you get to choose wh whatever you want. You can move things around, you can do different things, you can try a whole bunch of different things. Um, and if you're wondering, I believe this whole setup, if you counted all, all the time that I spent building this, I probably spent close to four to six hours um, physically working on this terrarium itself, you know, placing different things, doing the substrate, et cetera, et cetera. So even though in the video it's going to look like a pretty short process, this took me quite a few hours of positioning things where I wanted them, cutting things down again, moving things around, et cetera, et cetera. And unfortunately, you know, I'm always changing my mind on things like this, where I want things to be positioned, how I want them to look. And so I definitely went back and made a few changes, which you'll see in the end of the video or what you kind of saw in the intro compared to what it looks like at the end. Um, but there's nothing wrong with moving things around at this stage. You don't have any animals in here and you can kind of do whatever you want. And so I was very excited to do this and I was just having a good old time positioning things in different spots. After I got my cork bark to a position that I kind of liked, it was time to go ahead and add my mossy vine that I had purchased. Now this was a product I had never used before, but I was excited to try out for the first time. And it was a lot harder to bend than I had initially anticipated. And it was kind of difficult to work with, not in a bad way. I mean, it's good because it's good structure for your animals to climb on. Um, but when doing it in a tank like this that I already had kind of full of stuff, I didn't realize how hard it would be to maneuver the vines around and get it wrapped around things. So I ended up taking the cork bark out at this point, or you'll see in a little bit, um, to get my vine in the exact place that I wanted it. So you can see here, here's what it looks like with the vines in place now. You can see I took all the cork bark that was kind of out like laying in the trees. I took that away so I could get this vine in here. I feel like this looks pretty good now with the vine in place. Um, I got it everywhere I wanted it. I kind of tried to hide the ends a little bit so it looked like it was more natural. You can kind of see one of the ends sticking up there. But once I get the tank completed, you that'll be even hidden even more. So I don't really have to worry about that too much. But I think it looks pretty good so far overall. Nice hardscape. Got a little cork in there. Got our vine in there, which will add a little color and a little, you know, different texture for the animals in the end. So this was pretty cool. I really like the mossy vine. I would definitely buy this again if I had another terrarium I was going to build. Um, the sticks are still in here pretty sturdily. So everything's coming together pretty nicely. So now here's our terrarium with the vine in there and the cork bark back in the quote trees. I think it looks pretty good. I think our hardscape's really coming along. Um, and after this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more substrate in. Um, just because I lent a little bit light to begin with because um, I didn't know what I was doing positioning wise. But I'm going to add a little bit of substrate in and then we're going to add some of the other stuff in. And we're going to see how it looks. Now at this point I had most of our hardscape done but I thought it was looking a little bit empty still. So I decided to go ahead and add another kind of branch in there on the left side of the terrarium. I think it just added a little bit more character in there and a little bit more space in there and things to climb on. And so I think that was a good choice as well. I had a bunch of these sticks laying around, so I just baked up another one quick. This one was pretty small. It only had two little branches, but I think it'll make a difference in the overall look of our terrarium. After that, I went ahead and I added some plants. And for plants, I decided at first to go with all false aurelia. And false aurelia is pretty cool because according to the research I've done, it's pet and human safe. It's non-toxic. But it's also a plant that is native to New Caledonia, which would have been perfect if I was setting this up for a New Caledonian gecko. However, I wasn't, which is still a surprise, which I won't say. But they are supposedly a non-toxic plant from the island of New Caledonia, which is pretty cool. But I was a little bit skeptical about keeping them in the terrarium just because they do get a little bit larger, like I'm talking like feet large. So I'm hoping I can keep them alive. 
Um, but this was another thing that I decided to change a little bit in the end. I tweaked it and took some out and planted a pothos in there instead um, just to give it a little bit more green color. And these are also pretty slow growing, so I'm thinking it might be a while before they get to any sort of decent size. But it was pretty cool, and I thought it was kind of interesting that these were from the island of New Caledonia. After I added the sphagnum moss, I went on and added some of our frog moss, which is pretty easy to use. You just put it in a bucket of water, let it soak up some of the water, and then kind of wring it out so it's still moist but not super wet. And I added the moss to areas that in the terrarium that I thought moss would look kind of natural growing. So some of the more dark areas in the, in the crevices of the trees and around the tree bases. And when I say trees, I just mean the branches that I have in here. But I think it looked pretty good overall with the little vibrancy from the added frog moss. After adding the frog moss, I went ahead and added our last layer of our substrate, which is the leaf litter. Um, the frog moss is not a layer, it's drainage layer, then your mesh, then your substrate, sphagnum moss if you want, and leaf litter. And so I went ahead and I added that. I had bought some magnolia leaves, I believe, and I just added some of those throughout the terrarium on the ground, obviously, um, just to add a little bit of accent layer and our final layer to our substrate. And after all of this, our terrarium was looking pretty complete, as you can see. We have our moss, we have our hardscape. I added some little cork rounds on the ground in the back and to kind of act like, you know, quote, fallen tree, which was my kind of whole concept for this. Like a big branch had fallen down in the little sticks and then some on the ground as well. So I think it was looking pretty nice, honestly. I really like the way it turned out so far. And so after this, now that we had our whole terrarium set up, the next step for me was to add our microfauna. In this case, I was going to add springtails and dwarf white isopods. Now me being kind of a newbie, I didn't know what isopods and springtails would look like when they first came in because I had never had any before. But unfortunately, after talking with some people, my first batch was pretty much a dud. I ordered two cultures of springtails, two 8 ounce cultures, and then 20 dwarf white isopods. Um, 10 of the dwarf white isopods. Uh, were dead and both springtail cultures were bad um, but thankfully the company that I had ordered them from was gracious enough to replace them and get them shipped out to me super fast and the cultures came in very healthy and very alive and so I was thankful for that they looked great and I added those to the terrarium as well which is something that looking back on I wish I would have done um, before I added the sphagnum moss and the leaf litter um, just because uh, the springtails and the isopods come in a little bit of substrate and I just wanted to add that directly to the terrarium and now I had a lot of substrate in there and I was trying to kind of rich it up a little bit to add these in there and so I wish I would have done that a little bit earlier in the build. Now like I had mentioned earlier I decided to add a little bit of pothos in here and I took out some of the false aurelia just because I wasn't sure if I could keep all the false aurelia alive, number one. And I also thought the pothos would be easy to grow. They are pretty much unkillable and just a good beginner plant for me in my very first bioactive terrarium. And so I decided to take some of the false aurelia that I had living in the back of the terrarium and just repot it uh, into my house somewhere and add this pothos to hopefully add a little bit of color and more coverage uh, in this terrarium. So I added it kind of in the back left corner and I think that was the right move. It looked really good in there at the end of this video. And that's going to about do it for the whole build of my terrarium. There is a final step to this which is of course adding your animals. Now from the videos I've seen it's recommended that you let your bioactive sit for a couple weeks or a month you know so that the bioactive I mean so that the beneficial bacteria can build up in your drainage layer but also so that your microfauna can get established, your plant roots can get established, and things like that. And so this week um, is week number two, I think, of it sitting. Um, so it'll be about the end of September-ish before I add any of my geckos in here, which I'm going to make a separate video about what I'm going to be adding into this terrarium. But overall, this was a great experience for me. Like I said, a couple things I would change. I would wet the substrate before I put it in the terrarium. I'd add the microfauna before I added all the other um, sphagnum moss and leaf litter and I would have kind of came to a more solid setup and instead of like changing plants around and things like that. All in all if you're on the fence about building a bioactive terrarium I would say go for it. This was so enjoyable to me and a lot of fun. Um, the only con I would say about all this is that the price was pretty steep. Again I wasn't bargain hunting really when I was doing this build. I just kind of bought things that I wanted to do and wanted to try out things I'd never had before. And so I wasn't really shopping to make it the cheapest bioactive out there.
but all in all this came out to about five hundred dollars for this build um, and probably a little bit more and on unseen things probably more around six hundred dollars and that's including the terrarium all the plants all the sticks all the lights uh, the misting bottle that I'm using, which is not really this thing just for this terrarium. But all in all, I would say it was somewhere between five and $600, and that's not including the animals. So this was a pretty expensive build um, on my end, but I think it was a lot of fun. It was definitely worth it. I'm hoping I can keep the plants alive for a good amount of time at least. And if I don't, I have more pothos that I can put into here, which are supposedly unkillable. But before I add my animals I will do a little update video on this in about a couple of weeks once it's more established and how it looks then. But let me know what you think down below in the comments about this build. Did I do a good job for my first time? Is there anything you would have done differently? Let me know down below in the comments and I'm curious to see what you have to say but with that being said but with that being said thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in my next one.